Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night. Depending on where you are in this world, God bless you. This is Gloria White coming to you from Utah, USA. Um, we've heard of this, um, there's Russia attacking Ukraine. There were two provinces or areas that decided they didn't want to be there associated with Ukraine anymore. There's a lot of Russians that live in Ukraine. So these two areas declared their independence from Ukraine. Under international laws, they can't just do that. But then they sought uh, Russia or Vladimir Putin's assistance. Um, and so Vladimir agreed and a couple of days back signed an agreement that he would provide protection to those two areas. So what Putin has done was um, he told the uh, NATO people um, that they need to get their nose out of his business. Well, when NATO and the United States put their sanctions on Russia, something you have to understand about this, Russia has its own internet. It's not connected. Um, it, it has its own monetary um, system. And it has all the fuel that it needs. As a matter of fact, 40% of the United States fuel, natural gas, has been coming from Russia. So this goes to show you how bright Biden is. You go pick a fight. And that's exactly what he's done, in my opinion, is he has picked a fight with Russia. He has continuously poked the bear. And now the bear has come out. And the development with those two areas of Ukraine um, claiming their independence from Ukraine, prompting Putin to agree to support their independence from Ukraine and to provide military peacekeeping operations there. Now, my take on that is that we have, you, um, not United Nations, but we have NATO troops, including the United States, in the Ukraine for peacekeeping missions. But now everybody's mad because Putin has stepped into these two independent countries, which under international law, they can't just declare themselves independent. There's a process. I'm not sure what that process is, but they have not done that. Now, the other thing that started all this was when Putin said, I don't want Ukraine in the NATO. I don't want Ukraine to join NATO. And I could see where he was coming from because if NATO, if Ukraine became part of NATO, then NATO forces such as military equipment and nuclear weapons could be put right there on the border with Russia. And I don't think it's any different for Russia to feel like they didn't want nukes lined up there in Ukraine right on the border of Russia than any more than when we, the United States, did not want Cuba <laughs> to host um, Russia's missiles that were aimed at the United States. It was a very tense time, and John F. Kennedy, thankfully, was bold enough and smart enough, and so was uh, Gorbachev in Russia, that both of them had been in war, and neither one of them wanted to pursue war. So they were able to peacefully move those missiles away from the United States, being so close to the United States. Now, so Russia is saying they didn't want the NATO troops in Ukraine, which would be the same thing as the missiles in Cuba. And so we didn't respect that. But the other thing, the other interesting thing about all that and what started all this was that Ukraine was trying to become a member of the United, of the NATO, NATO um, group. 
but they couldn't, they weren't eligible. And the reason being is there were conflicts going on within Ukraine. In order to get into the, the, um, the NATO, they have to have complete peace in their country. There can't be any kind of warring going on. So they were never eligible to go into NATO. Now, Joe Biden knew this, but he never said a word. And we had all this, um, you know, propaganda from the mainstream media. War is going to happen any day. Blinken, oh, Russia's going to attack, you know, oh, oh, this and oh, that. You know, it's imminent, it's imminent, it's imminent. This is stoking the fire. This is stoking the fire, this media participation in propagating all of this misinformation was just stoking the fire. And it's my opinion that Joe Biden wants war because our economy is in the dumpster because of all the policies he has enacted, such as cutting off the XL pipeline, um, having farmers plow their crops under, um, not doing anything about the situation with the supplies that are trying to come into the United States in the port of Los Angeles. And Gavin Newsom has played a part in that because there is also a port in Stockton, California, and they were there and ready, had all the men, all the equipment, ready to start unloading those cargo ships. And Gavin Newsom said, oh, no, don't do that. No, no, you can't do that. So he didn't allow that to happen because more cargo containers would have been, um, more, yeah, more cargo containers would have been unloaded. So this is like an intentional kind of thing. And so... The cargo ships are still lined up out there in the Pacific Ocean waiting to be unloaded at our docks. Now, most of those things that are coming across the Pacific Ocean are coming from China. So we're not getting those goods from China. And it's hurting us and it's been hurting us and it's going to continue to hurt us. Now, China's take is America needs to stay out of Taiwan and not get over there between China and Taiwan. They're directly threatening us. And and what the one of the Chinese spokesmen said was that it was going to start Armageddon. Well, it can't start Armageddon because it's not time for Armageddon. Okay, Armageddon happens after God's children are raptured out of here. And then that occurs during the wrath of God. So, um, you know, China is not a Christian com country and they persecute the Christians there in China. So let's just not even look at China right now. So now what Putin is doing is he is taking out all of the military um, bases in Ukraine. And I think he's trying to stop any kind of military activity in Ukraine against Russia, assisting in peacekeeping missions in these two areas that are trying to declare their independence from the Ukraine. Now, granted, most of the people that live in those two areas are Russians. There are Russians living there. And there are also Ukrainians living there as well. But this whole hyper, 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 hyper war hype, 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 hype going on has been, in my opinion, intentional. Much like the intentional um, cutting off of the gas and the fuel um, that we need to run power plants, to heat our homes, to put lights on in our homes, for businesses to run, um, for vehicles and such as that, 
to t carry people back and forth to their jobs, to schools, to, to, you know, shop, whatever. And then also for the trucks to have fuel to be able to haul the um, products that we need to get to stores so Americans can buy them. And then we had the crops being plowed under. And so nothing that I can see that the president, the current president has done, has benefited Americans. Um, if you want to switch over to green fuel, you need to get that in place before you try to cut off fossil fuels. So what he's done is he has driven the price up. So it's like taxing cigarettes so people don't smoke. It's going to cause people to use less and less and less because they can't afford to have it. Like me with my light bill, it went from $35 to $65 and this month was $83. Well, I can't afford $125 next month. So I'm trying to keep my heater off as much as possible. So, um, but this plowing under of the crops in the United States and threatening the farmers that if they didn't agree to, to take the money from the government to plow their crops under, that they would come in and destroy their crops themselves. The government would come and destroy those crops and then the farmers would get nothing. Now we have this fertilizer issue, and most of our fertilizer comes from China and Russia. <laughs> so we can't exactly produce as much as we've been producing without this nitrogen fertilizer, ammonium nitrate. And we had factories here that were producing that. One was destroyed in a hurricane. And the other one recently caught on fire where there was 500 tons. There was 100 tons in the factory. And then there was another 500 tons in railway cars that were parked behind the factory that was burning. And they couldn't get in there to put the fires out. And I don't know why they couldn't move those trains. And I don't know why they couldn't use the um, flame retardant stuff that they put on forest fires to drop it there on this factory to put out any kind of, you know, danger of fire. And we haven't heard anything else about it. But they were predicting that in like 33 hours, the plant was going to explode. I haven't heard. Has anybody else heard anything else about that? I haven't. But now the cost of fertil fertilizer for the farmers has gone up so much that it's just beyond their financial ability to get the fertilizer. Corn is a high nitrogen um, plant. It needs a lot of nitrogen to produce. And um, that means that it needs a lot of fertilizer. The biggest crop I think that we have in America is corn. And then second is wheat. Now, a lot of the farmers that farm corn are not going to be planting corn because they know they're not going to have the fertilizer. Now, here was the other, another little part. Russia had said, they were not going to be exporting any fertilizer to anywhere that they were going to be taking care of themselves first. Well, ammonium nitrate is made as a byproduct from producing natural gas. Russia produces an enormous amount of natural gas. So I'm sure they have an enormous amount of fertilizer. But they said that they were not going to export any fertilizer until April. But they did agree to send Brazil twice as much as they needed. 
And China also said they were not going to be sending any um, ammonium nitrate out, um, that they were going to be caring for themselves. Now, doesn't that sound like something that the Russia and China got together in their little friendship agreement to do? They know that America needs it to produce the food. We are the breadbasket of the world. And I don't know if any of you listen to AP or Alaskan Press Prepper or if you follow the Ice Age Farmer, but there is going to be a food deficit, um, cal a caloric deficit, and millions of people are going to die of hunger. Now, in our scriptures, we know that the black horse in Revelation is the horse of inflation and famine. And so we see that that horse is riding. Now we hear wars and rumors of wars. That's also in Revelation 6. And so we see this, um, them pounding the drum for war, war, war. So I think that horse is out of its stall in riding and coming. And then behind those two will be the horse death. So when we're looking at our situation in trying to continue a normal lifestyle here in America, President Joe Biden has professed that he's going to do everything in his power to uh, help Americans at the pump. Well, he really has no options. He's asked, begged Saudi Arabia to please pump more oil for America. But in the same breath, he has cut off our XL pipeline that was bringing fuel from Canada. He has stopped any drilling or fracking here in America. How does he think he's going to alleviate that problem without allowing those um, things that he has put the ixnay on? Um, I don't think he can do it. I know he can't do it. Without us producing some of our own fuel, it's not going to be possible. And power plants use coal, or they use natural gas, to produce electricity, to run everything that we depend on here in America, that we've grown accustomed to. Now, given our relatives, <laughs> our ancestors, didn't have the conveniences that we have. But they survived. They learned how to survive. They grew food. They preserved it for the, to get through the winter. And also enough that if their crops failed the next summer, they still had enough to keep going. They would not starve to death. But in the same breath, we also know about the Great Depression and also the Dust Bowl. So during the Great Depression, things were very hard and people were struggling and they went from place to place looking for work. <coughs> oh, excuse me, looking for work. And so they moved around a lot and they couldn't hardly afford food and they would work just to have food. Now, those that had farms um, and they had uh, homesteads, they were doing okay because they were growing their own food. They had their own cattle and chickens and stuff. And we weren't experiencing um, the kind of weather that we're experiencing now that we're in this solar minimum, which we are now moving into the solar maximum. But the weather is going to increase in extremes so in other words when it's snowing it's going to snow a lot when it's cold it's going to be very cold when it gets hot it's going to be very hot when it rains it's going to flood you can check that out on a channel called the two preachers and they put out a weekly comp compilation of the events that are happening around the world the crazy weather um, uh, that the rain comes down so hard it just floods 
the, the cities, the towns, and cars are being washed away, and people are being drowned and killed. And, and then in the, um, like in uh, Turkey, they had unseasonably cold weather and snow. So you got to think about what kind of effect that not only had on the people, but anything that they were trying to produce, and also any of the animals that were exposed to this extreme cold. And th there was a lot of um, wildlife and, and, um, and livestock that was killed during this, that time. So that happened. And so, and we're also having fires, very severe fires in Australia once again. And I'm expecting that this um, spring and summer, we're going to see the same thing happening with the West Coast again with drought and fire. So we don't have any way to predict what kind of crops our farmers are going to be able to produce or anyone with a homestead and a piece of ground that they can put in a garden. There's no way to prepare for the weather extremes that we're going to be experiencing. So if we look at Matthew 24, Jesus said he foretold us all things. Now, you have to be smart enough to realize that when he said, take no thought for what you're going to eat or what you're going to wear, that that was then. And then he warned about what would come at the end times. And we are in the end times. The, the last generation began when Israel became a nation in 1948. So man's lifespan, according to God, would be 70 years. 80 years by sheer his, the person's sheer strength. Well, we know we have people that live past that, but it's not that many, right? So, um, we are 74 years from the date that Israel became a nation that began the last generation. Because Jesus said, this generation shall not pass away until all these things be accomplished. But Jesus also said in Matthew 24, and let me just turn there. So much of my Bible has fallen out that it just feels weird to me. I really have to get it fixed. And someone asked me what kind of Bible I have, and I'm going to do a separate video on that. Um... But here in Matthew 24, Jesus is warning us of all the things that are going to come on this earth. Because he was there and his disciples came to him and they were there by the temple and they were, his disciples were saying, look at this building. And Jesus said, there will not be left one stone upon another. And they said, well, tell us what will be the sign of your coming for his return and and the end of this age then Jesus starts talking to them and the first thing he said was take heed that no man deceive you now we know that there are false prophets in this world professing to be teaching the word of God but they're not if you're attending a church that says you don't need to know what Revelation says because you're not going to be here. I'm, I'm sorry, but they are misleading you. And unless you read that yourself, you're not going to know that they're misleading you because Revelation is a revealing, an unveiling of what is going to be happening in the end times. Just as Jesus was telling his disciples here in Matthew 24. The first thing he says is, Take heed that no man deceive you. So man, being your preacher, your pastor, your minister, your bishop, your priest, whatever. 
whatever man is teaching you the word of God. You have to be careful, and unless you're studying it yourself diligently, then you're not going to know if you're being deceived. So here, the first thing is, take heed that no man deceive you. And then he goes on and says, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ. And we are seeing these people pop up around the world saying, I'm Christ, I've come to you know, save the world. Of course, they're lunatics. But, uh, because <clears throat> they didn't, Jesus isn't going to just walk up somewhere, you know, and, um, and appear that way. He's not. The sky's going to bust wide open and Jesus is coming and you're going to see him with all the holy angels. So, these people are false prophets, false Christ. Now he goes on in verse 6 and says, Ye will hear of wars and rumors of wars. But this, what he says, is very important. And I want you to put this and write it on your heart. Write it on a piece of paper. Oops. And put it up where you can see it every day. Put it in the bathroom. Put it in the kitchen. Put it on the front door. Put it on the outside of the front door. Put it on your bedroom door. Put it on your closet door. So you can continuously keep reminding yourself of these words. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. This is what you're going to write. This is in Matthew 24, verse 6. See that ye be not troubled. For all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet. So all these things must come to pass. And then it goes on and lists the things that may come, must come to pass. And so those of you who are being taught that you don't have to worry about what's going to be happening in the end times, we're not going to be here, are being deceived. Because here it says, all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. But see ye, be not troubled. Don't let all this news, this propaganda, all this war, rumors of wars, don't let it shake you up. Just remain calm and trust in the Lord. It says, goes on here in verse 7, For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines. Now this is the warning that changes what he said before about taking no heed, no thought for what you're going to eat or what you're going to wear. It changes in the end times because he's, he's been asked by the disciples in verse 3. And I'll drop my glasses down here. Tell us, when shall these things be and what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of of the world or the end of this age this generation these things are going to come to pass before the end and here it says and there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in divers which means various places and we're seeing that all around the world and this famine thing um, is going to just continue to get worse. We're not only fighting no fertilizer here in America, which is the breadbasket of the world, but we're also fighting these extremes in the weather, where we had a couple of years ago a derecho, which mowed down 10 million acres of corn. <clears throat> in Canada, that produces the sugar beets, that we buy sugar, um, it was wiped out by an early cold spell. So we can't predict what the weather's going to do. We know it's going to be in extremes. We don't know who it's going to affect when or where, or even how. But we know it's going to be a, an, an effect and have a major effect on our food production. Um, 
And then there'll be pestilences, which now we've seen COVID, but other things are coming and earthquakes in divers places. Now listen, all of these things, all of that are the beginning of sorrows. Well, now we can see nation rising against nation. We can see that the world food supply is being, um, is being um, jeopardized, that it's not going to be what it was. We know that the weather's getting weird and we're not going to get fertilizer. Well, we're not the only one. China has been hit by flood after flood after flood. And they have been buying food up from all around the world. Lots and lots and lots of food to store in their country to feed their people. Think they know something? We used to have silos full of grain. We don't have that now. And there are food reserves in America, but it's only enough for like a month. A month. For the number of people we have here in America. Now we also know that we get gas from Mexico. They're going to next year cut their exports of gas and not in, in, in oil 20%. What they ship out, they're going to cut it by 20%. So that source of oil is basically going to go down to practically nothing. Now you can start to see why it's more important and more important for us to produce our own fuel. And all of these are the beginning of sorrows. Now what exactly are sorrows? And I know this is getting to be a long video, but bear with me. Sorrows is when a woman is going to be giving birth. Now what happens when a woman goes into labor is that the pain produced is not very intense. It's enough where she goes, oh honey, I think, uh, I think it's starting because the pain is minimal. And then it's a long time before she gets the next pain. But as she continues in labor, the pain becomes more and more intense. It's pushing the cervix open so that the baby can go from the womb, from inside the uterus, through the womb and, and out into the world. Well, it takes a lot of muscle contractions to, to spread open the cervix so that the baby can pass through. And as that's happening, the pains beget more and more intense and they come closer and closer together until the child is born. So we are in the beginning of sorrows, in the beginning of the labor. And we are so, if we're 74 years into a 70 year generation, then we're looking at by sheer strength, the 80 years. So we know that the tribulation period is going to be seven years. Well, at this point that we are right now at 74 years, that leaves six years remaining, which tells me we've been in the final days for a whole year. And we can pretty much see that since Joe Biden has taken office. It's just what it is. And we also know God puts up leaders and he takes them down. Puts up kings and takes them down. According to his will and his purpose. So then we go on. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted. Well, we know that Satan is going to come to power. And he's going to continue for three and a half years. Now, the, that would be the last three and a half years of the seven-year tribulation period. Well, what has happened the first three and a half years? All the things that the horsemen in Revelation 6, that has to build up. And all of this is going to push people to the brink with war, with famine, with pestilence, 
with the inflation, the cost of food. And so we're going to see all these things happening. And then Satan will come to reign. But what else is happening in that time, the time period of the horsemen, is that the new world order is going to come. And everybody in the world is going to be pushing together as one people with a tiny little bit of people at the top controlling everything. There will become one economic system, one military system, and one religious system. And so everybody will have to do the same thing. And that's where we're going to run into problems when people don't want to do that. But then they shall deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you. This is where Satan is going to get the power for the three and a half years. Once he rises on the scene. Not until then. There may be persecution because you won't join the new world order. Or don't want to conform to the new world order. And then shall many be offended. And shall betray one another. And shall hate one another. Now we know in Nazi Germany. <clears throat> when when um, Hitler was coming to power. He used the people against each other. As we're seeing happen now in our country with the division, the, the constant pounding, the division between um, the races um, and the economics, the rich against the poor, one faction against another, okay? So we're seeing that. And, and so it says they're going to betray one another. So... If you're not like falling in line with the new world order, just like in Nazi Germany, when they wouldn't fall in order. So what they started doing was using the people against each other. And um, so they started betraying one another. They became offended because the things were happening because, oh, it's those people. Just like what we just saw in Canada. Oh, it's those people, those truckers, who were there under their legal rights protesting the government to make a change. And they weren't alone, even though all the people that were lined up on the highways and the overpasses were not there with them. They were representing all of those people. But they villainized them and made them the bad guy. Because they were the problem, exercising their freedom of speech and their ability to petition the government for change. Because the government's not there for the government. The government is there for the people. However, we keep seeing that the government is not really there for the people. An example is when we passed the $1.9 trillion COVID package. And only 9% of that $1.9 trillion benefited in the, Amer the American citizens. They sent billions and millions of dollars overseas. Now, so, um, and shall, so you'll be afflicted. And then many shall, many shall, oh, and then shall many be offended and shall betray one another, and shall hate one another. They're the bad guys. And the government's going, look, that's the bad guy. Hate them. It's all their fault. And the media in the United States, much like the media in Canada, well, the media in Canada, I recently found out, was receiving billions of dollars from the government. Who do you think they're going to back? The government or the people or the truth or a lie? 
Yeah. So we're, we're being driven apart. So we need to pull together more and more to, to combat that. And so you're going to have, um, like in Nazi Germany, I was trying to say, that they came for the Smiths, and nobody said anything. Then they came for the Joneses, and nobody said anything. And they came for the Smiths, and nobody said anything. And then they came for you, and there was nobody for you to help you. So just realize that that is what we're going to be seeing. And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. This ties right back to verse 4, where Jesus said, Take heed that no man deceive you. What is a false prophet? A false teacher. So unless you're studying God's word on your own and really delving into your scriptures and reading your Bible and and pouring over each of the verses <coughs> for understanding. You're not going to know if you're being deceived. You're not going to know if you're hearing a lie. If you're being told the truth. And I think that, and it says, And because iniquity, which is sin, shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. And this waxing cold... And it's my opinion that the reason that it, the love waxes cold is because so many have been told, you're not going to be here for any of that. Don't worry about it. You're going to be out of here. You're going to be whisked away. You're not going to experience any trouble. Well, if you're here now, you're already experiencing trouble. Because high gas prices, shortage of food, you see the short store shelves, what about the cost of everything that's going up? Can you order everything that you want? Can you afford what you need? Okay. And so a lot of people who are expecting to not have to experience any of this pain, any of this tribulation, are going to be disappointed to the point that they're going to say, He's not coming. I've been lied to. He's not coming. What is the point? I give up. A lot of people are going to give up. Their love for God is going to wax cold. They're going to fall away. There is a great falling away coming. I keep hearing these, um, uh, they call themselves prophets or or, you know, they're having visions and they're, they're having dreams and they're on telling about every dream they have. And, and they're telling people, he's coming, he's coming, he's coming any minute, any minute, any second. He's not coming any minute or any second because all these things must come to pass first. Before the end. <clears throat> and take heed that no man deceive you. Now, if you've been told you're not going to be here, you're not preparing for being in any kind of tribulation. You're going to be gone. No problem. Let the world go to, go to whatever in a handbasket, right? It's not going to affect me. Me and my family, we're going to be out of here. Verse 13. But he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. So all these things, the earthquakes and the famine and the pestilences and, and, and the earthquakes and kingdom against kingdom war is going to have to occur first. There's no other way to read this. There's no other way to understand this. And then, <laughs> and then, and those that shall endure until the end, not, not till the beginning, 
or to whatever, but to the end. The same shall be saved. And the gospel will be preached around the world. And then shall the end come. So you're going to experience all these problems. And if you aren't spiritually connected to God and depending on him for your strength to get through these things. Or if you're expecting to be gone and not have to deal with any of this. You're not going to be prepared. You're, 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 if you haven't been putting any food back. You didn't believe what he said here in this book. That there's famine coming. When Joseph. Of the tribe of Israel. The 12 patriarchs. Was taken to Egypt. It was for the purpose of fulfilling the will of God to preserve Israel, who was Jacob. His name was changed to Israel. And then he had the 12 sons, which are the 12 patriarchs of Israel, to preserve their lives. Because God warned Pharaoh in a dream that there was going to be a famine of seven years. But it would be, occur after seven years of plenty. There would be plenty of food for seven years, but then famine. So what Joseph did, endowed by wisdom with from wisdom with wisdom from God, he stored back enough food to feed all of Egypt for seven years. But those people in Egypt also included Israel and the 12 patriarchs. I don't know if you know the story when, when Israel or Jacob sent his sons to, to Egypt to get food because they had no grain for bread. But you also have to remember that he sent some things. He sent food with them to take as a gift to Pharaoh fruit and nuts, so they weren't completely without food. But they didn't have the grain to feed their animals. They didn't have any grain to grind for bread. And that's a big deal. And in the Lord's Prayer, it says, give us this day our daily bread. That's why we could live on bread. Sustain us. So, Give us this day our daily bread. They didn't have any bread. So they left where they were and they wound up in Egypt. And, 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 and God arranged for Joseph to put them in the land of Goshen, the best land in the land, the best place in the land. And Pharaoh told Joseph to do that. This was all part of God's plan. Everything that occurs is part of God's plan. It's his will being done. And so that's what's happening in our lives right now. Is God is at work. <laughs> he's always at work. Even when you don't see him. He's working. Even when you don't feel him. He's working. He never stops working. And what's he working for? You and me. Everything he does is for his children. He's got everything he needs. Jesus has everything that he needs. All the angels have what they need. Who needs God? Us. We need God. He's doing all this for us. He made the earth for us. And everything that's in it for us. And everything that you have in your home. Everything that you call your belongings. They're on loan from God. We don't own anything in this world. It all belongs to God. He's loaning it to us. He's providing for us. So just be relaxed. And in Luke 21, 36, 
you should I should read this to you because I, I always want to say it in, but wrong. Like I could paraphrase it. But when I'm making a point, I want to read it right from the scripture so I get it exactly right. Luke 21, 36. So chapter 21 in the book of Luke, verse 36. Watch. This is what we're supposed to be doing. Watch. Watch ye therefore and pray always that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. So we can do it. And this here is saying some people are going to be worthy to escape these things that are coming. Just like in Israel, <laughs> when Elijah, God provided for him. He told him to go somewhere and he had a raven feed him. Then he sent him out of the land to Jezebel's land, <laughs> her hometown. God sent him to Jezebel's hometown because she wanted to kill Elijah. And he sent Elijah to a widow that he had told the widow and put it in her heart that this man was coming and that she should do what he says. And God took the vessel that there was oil and the vessel where there was wheat, the flour. And he made it so that they never ran empty. So they could keep having their daily bread. <laughs> I heard a story a man said. I have tremendous faith in God. He said, we were so poor. And every day, my, my dad would go, walk up to the freezer, and he would open the door, and he'd say, Lord, feed my family. And he said his dad would pull out a pack of chicken. Have faith. Have faith. You have to have your faith good and strong. Found it strongly in the word of God. And believe. Don't just read the words and go, oh yeah, he said this and he said that. My friend texted me and said, it's happened, we're at war. And I thought, be ye, be ye not troubled. And then I just went on about cleaning up my kitchen and making dog food and, you know, and not being shook up or worried or afraid because I trust him. He said, see ye be not troubled. Don't be troubled by all of this. Don't let it bother you. And pray ye always that ye be counted worthy to escape all these things. And just know he loves us so much. How much he loves us what he went through oh, to bring us the salvation, this gift, this beautiful, beautiful gift. So whatever you have to go through to get to him, it'll be worth it because heaven is so beautiful. And the things that he has prepared for us, no eye has seen, no ear has heard, nobody can even imagine the marvelous wonders that God has gone to prepare for us. He said, I have to go. But if I go, to prepare a place for you. I'll come back for you. And he certainly will be back for us. But not when you think. If you're thinking he's going to take you out. Before all the trouble gets started. Just know. He's not coming until the seventh trumpet. And if you're not reading your Bible. You won't even know what the six seals are. You won't know anything about the trumpets. And what's going to come. And what's going to happen. You're clueless because you haven't read the book of Revelation because some man has told you it's not important. You're not going to be here. 
He lied to you. He lied to you. So, get in your Bible. <laughs> and the other thing I want to say is, we're going to be persecuted. Christ told us, if I was persecuted, and he was persecuted for no reason, they made it up. They told a bunch of lies. Get you a hard copy of the Bible. Get you a couple of copies. Hide it. Hide one. Because they are going to come for them. They are going to try to outlaw Christianity again. <laughs> but see, he be not troubled. He loves us so much. And all these things must come to pass. But see, ye be not troubled. <laughs> and as always, I love you. And I've missed you guys so much. <laughs>